If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Psalms 85. Thank you, gentlemen. And so what? But open up to Psalms 85, and we're going to be camping out in Psalms 85 today. And if you don't have a Bible, there's Bibles underneath your seats. There's also uh, Bibles on the back bookshelf. And if you don't own a Bible, just keep that Bible. It's now yours. Amen. And there's Bibles on the phone because you got to look technology. But we'll be in Psalms 85. And we're going to look at verse 6 and then we'll base everything off of verse 6. But verse, verse 6 says this, Will you not revive us again? Look at someone and say, Revive us again. That your people may rejoice in you. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. Alright, my beautiful daughter, my Otis, Annalise, come on up. Alright, lay down for daddy. She's light as a feather. She'll be good. Alright, you got to lay down. Now, one of the pictures that God kept giving me as I was praying and studying for this message and about being revived again, there's two illustrations I want to give here and then we'll jump in uh, and then we'll begin to break it apart. First one, those of you who are with us in May, and let me tell you something, man, our church has like gone through a radical transformation since, Ray, uh, since uh, May. But, uh, one of the things, if y'all remember, I, I stood before this church and I repented to many of y'all. I went to my wife, I repented to her, and I repented to y'all that I had fallen into a slumber. That the Bible had become like a checklist for me. I wasn't really, I was reading it, but man, I wasn't letting God doing what He needed to do in me. And I remember going to my wife and just weeping because I wasn't properly loving her either because of it. And I just repented to her. And I repented to y'all. And it's been incredible when we went through that series, Awaken, asking God for revival, what we've been seeing God do. And family, everybody look up here at me online. We haven't seen nothing yet, amen? amen. Like, we need more, amen? amen? We can't become satisfied, amen? amen. We, we want more. And, and one of the dangers the Lord has shown me in Psalms 85 is this danger of wanting to go back to sleep, wanting to go back into a slumber. And I'm here to tell you, there's many Christians. The American church is in great danger because we've been in a slumber. We're like, sweet, looks like COVID is starting to die off some. We're getting some of our freedoms back. Things look a little bit more normal. And I can go back to sleep. And God is going, no. Your soul is too precious and too valuable. Amen? And family here, tell us this morning, we can't go back into that slumber. We need to be more in God's Word, more in prayer, more seeking His face than ever before. And the other picture the Lord showed me, He showed me some of us in here, we're, we're, we're in danger of going back into a slumber. Others of you, God gave me this picture. When I was in elementary, I was young. Me and my sisters were at my dad's apartment. We're swimming. My, my youngest sister, my baby sister, she's probably eight or nine. My dad's taking turns, we're on his back, swimming back and forth. And all of a sudden he goes, where's Teresa? And, and, and I try to do this because it still moves me to this day. I turn and I look and all I can see is my baby sister floating on top of the water. Just like lifeless. And, and me and my sisters just froze. We didn't know what to do. We just froze because kids usually don't know what to do. And I remember as we're froze, my dad just dives into the water. And he grabs her and scoops her up. And she's just lifeless. Lays her on this table like my daughter. Begins to form, form CPR. Breathing into her mouth. Nothing's happening. My sisters and I are just crying. We don't know what to do. Because we're watching our dad like we've never seen him before. God, Going, God, no. God, no. God, please. Save my baby daughter, God. Please breathe back into her, God. Yelling, someone please call 911. And he's just pleading to God. And family, out of nowhere, all of a sudden we just see, <clears throat> she just begins to cough and water comes up. And I remember my dad just lifts her up and he just hugs her and he just goes quick to the car and, and we all rush to the hospital. And family, what the Lord, Lord showed me at and, 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 and this picture, it's, there's many of us drowning. We're drowning. 
And will we be like the people of Israel? And this passage, family, it's not just one, this is not one person writing Psalms 85. The whole nation of Israel has come together and they're crying out, God, revive us. We, we understand that we're drowning. And we understand that we've been rejecting your life preserver. You want to rescue us and we're just drowning. We're, we're looking to politics. We're looking to sex. We're, we're looking to addictions. We're looking to fame, power, money. We're looking to everything but you. And we understand we're about to die. And we don't want to die. And so they cried out, God, revive us again. And there's some of you in here. God is saying if you don't cry out, you're going to drown. And He wants to dive in. He wants to rescue you. you got to stop pushing Him away. Amen? And let Him revive. Let Him speak life over you. Hallelujah. Cry out to Him. And family, I also shared some of you are in a slumber. You think you're good. Oh, I'm good. And God is saying, no, you are more in danger than the person who's drowning. You think your soul is good? I no longer look at you. I no longer shine on you. This is what's happening in Psalms 85. And family, I'll be honest, it's what the Lord was showing me. I was wanting to go back into this slumber. I'm like, man, things are good. And the Lord said, if you start thinking like that, Billy, I will turn my face again. I don't want God to turn His face from me. Amen? Amen? I need His face shining on me. I need Him shining on my marriage, my children, and this church. Amen? Amen. We can't go into a slumber. And those of you who are drowning, I have good news for you. Cry out this morning. Amen? He'll rescue you. Some of you need to be rescued for the very first time. Others of you, you know Him. And it's time for you to be awoken out of that slumber. Amen? Amen. It's time for you to stop rejecting Him and receive Him. Thank you, baby girl. Y'all give her a hand. And so family, we got to ask ourselves this morning, are you in a slumber? Are you in danger of falling back into a slumber? Do you grasp the state of your soul and that you need to be revived? Where in your life do you need to be revived, family? Because we all need reviving. Are you fighting God and wanting something else to revive you? Because there's some of us, we're drowning. And if you know anything about drowning... I've had to rescue a couple of people. I was a lifeguard. You, you've got to come up from behind people because you know what they'll, they're, they're, their tendency to do? Is they want to fight you. Not realizing you're there to save their life, they will begin to fight you. I see it. I'm a pastor. I can't tell you how often I see it. You're there to help, rescue, and they fight. Not understanding that they're on the verge of dying. And family, we've also got to ask ourselves this morning, are we going to be the generation of Hezekiah? We, we love Hezekiah. Man, God spared his life. Unfortunately, he chose not to use it for God's glory. And, and God says this, Hezekiah, because of your good works, the things you did for me, I won't destroy the generation. I won't destroy this nation until you die. You know what Hezekiah's response was? As long as I don't have to see it. You know how many of us are right now? You know, kids, I love you. I wanted, to, I wanted to have you. But man, I'm just so glad the Lord has told me that I won't see America die. It will be you instead. Because we're on the verge of watching this nation die before our very eyes. And many of us are like Hezekiah. God, just please don't let me see it. It's okay if my kids see it. It's okay if they get to find out what that's like. No, may we be like Josiah and Josephat and say, God, no, revive us. Amen? Bring life back to this nation. Bring life back to us. Amen, family? And so family, know as we jump in, this is a prayer. It's a prayer for revive us again. And it's not just one person. It's a collective group of people who have come together who have understood the state of their soul, the state of their nation, the state of the church, and that God has to do something. And we got to ask ourselves this morning, do we understand the state of our soul? Do we understand the state of the church right now in America and the state of this nation? Because we need revival. And family, notice in their prayer, they're specific and they're intentional. 
And we need to know this. When you pray, it's so important that we are specific and that we're intentional in our prayer. They're coming for revival. They're not coming and going, oh, let me just ramble in my prayer. No, Lord, it's, it's like my dad. My dad knew, God, you have to do something. I'm going to watch my baby girl die in front of me. His prayer was very specific. He wasn't praying about me. God, help my son who froze. No, God, touch my daughter and speak life back into her. And our prayers have to be like this as well. Amen, family? Amen. And so family, uh, number one, when it comes to being revived again, family, not only individually do we need to be crying out for revival, but we need to come together, amen, in one accord. Can I get an amen, family? Because right now we live in a time and age where everybody wants us divided. I don't care what, what side you're on politically, both sides want division. People are loving division, and we got to ask ourselves, are we going to be a part of division, or are we going to unite and be a part of God's message, amen, that brings all people together from all walks of life, amen? And family, when you study the revival of, uh, throughout history, God's people came together. Whether it was just a few people, like John Wesley, George Whitfield, and Charles Wesley, who people made fun of, they would call them the Holy Rollers, because they would pray every day on campus, and so Christians would make fun of them. I promise you when they saw how God used them to turn the road upside down, they weren't laughing at those holy rollers no more. So whether it's a few or whether it's many coming together praying for revival, family, it's what we have to do. Number two, when it comes to uh, us being revived again, we need to learn in our prayers to start off with, Oh God and Oh Lord. Amen? Look right here, family, in Psalms 85, and look at verse... Look at verse uh, 4. It says, Restore us again, O God. Everyone say, O God. O God. And then look at verse, six, uh, verse 7. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. Everyone say, O Lord. O Lord. I love what the, the, the English preacher Martin Lowe joins said. He says, When you hear in the prayers, O God, O Lord, revival's on its way. You see, when, you, when you're crying out those words, O God, O Lord, family, it was like my dad when he was performing CPR on my, my sister, you know, he, you know he was crying out, Oh God! Oh Lord! Family, he was groaning. He was groaning. He was weeping. He was desperate before God. And that's how the people of Israel are right now. As they're crying out, Oh God, Oh Lord! They're desperate. Their land has been plagued. People are dying. They're, 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 the nation is divided. They're watching everything crumble around them. And they know it's because of their sins. They know it's because they're drowning. And, 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 and they come to the realization these idols and everything else that we put our faith and trust in are failing us. We're going to die if we hang on to them. We've got to let them go. And we've got to cry out. Because family, when you're crying out, Oh Lord, Oh God, it's like... You're raising, whether you're standing with your hands in the Lord, whether you're on your knees with your hands in the air, or whether you're prostrate, that, that, that's what that word means. You're prostrate. Your, your hands are out. God, I'm fully surrendered. I understand. Unless you breathe, unless you do something, we're all doomed. So we've got to learn to cry out and pray, Oh God, Oh Lord. Amen, family? And then family, point three, take a hold of God. Look at someone and say, take a hold of God. Family, the nation of Israel right here, you know what they're doing? They are grabbing a hold of God. They are taking a hold of God. Look right here, starting in verse 4. It says this, Restore us again, O God, our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? that Your people may rejoice in You. Show us Your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us Your salvation. Family, they have grabbed a hold of God. And they're still grabbing a hold. Look at verse 8. Let me hear what the God the Lord will speak. I love that. They're grabbing a hold of Him. You know what they're saying? We're not letting go of You, God, until we hear You speak revival. Until we hear You speak life again into us. We're not letting go. And are we like that this morning? Are we like that in our marriage? Are we like that with our kids? Are we like that when we see the state of our nation right now? And family, here's what I mean, taking a hold. We're drowning. If we'll just be honest and real this morning, we're drowning. 
And many of us, instead of taking hold of God, we're taking hold of unbelief. We're taking hold of false gospels. There are people trying to marry stuff into the gospel right now. Family, uh uh-uh. It's the gospel or nothing. We don't marry politics, anything else to the gospel. Amen? But we're, we're, we're grabbing a hold of these things. And not realizing if we don't let go, we're going to die. It's like when God came to Jacob and He tells Jacob after Jacob wrestled, you, you, you want to see my blessings on all your people? You tell them to let go of those idols. And if you know the story, his lovely wife Rachel, who he loves much, she did what? She took the idols with her. I'm holding on to these so when I'm drowning, you know what her husband finally did? Became a leader. Get rid of those idols. We're going to die with those idols. Told his whole family, get rid of the idols. For now on, it's Jesus or nothing in this family. And that's what many of us need to do this morning, amen? amen. Jesus or nothing. I'm taking a hold of you. And family, it goes back to what Isaiah says. Isaiah says this. That, that God has turned His face from us. And family, He has. God is not shining on the American church right now. He ain't shining on this nation. And it's not just because of our grievous sins from the past. It's our sins that we're still doing. God is like, there's, there's nothing for me to shine upon. He's turned His face. He's like that, that parent, that mom or dad, that, man, we know our sin is so grievous that they can't look at us. It's like when, when I got arrested, and I'll never forget, I'm thinking, man, how fast can I, can, I, can I get out of this cell until they told me, hey, your dad and mom are out there. Just leave me in here. <laughs> I was scared. I'll be honest. My dad was in the military. I'm like, man, I'm scared. Not only that, but man, I loved my dad. The last person I ever wanted to lose respect from was my dad. And I knew when I walked out and saw his face, I'll never forget. He couldn't be here, but I remember I'm on the phone. And he's like, son, like you have shattered me. Like you have brought embarrassment to our home. Like how do I, how do I come back home to this? And so it's that child understanding what they've done. And so they grab a hold of their dad's leg or their mom's leg. And they're saying, look, I know I brought shame. I know I've sinned. Please, I need you to look at me again, though. I need you to shine your face on me again. I can't have you not looking at me, God. I'll do whatever it takes, God. I'll count the cost. I'm going to follow you. Just I need you to look at me again and shine your face on me again. That's what it means to take a hold of God. And are we doing that? It's like the person drowning. You throw the the, um, life preserver out there and the person goes, nope. We'd all be like, what? (laughs) And that's what many of us do with the cross and the gospel. Jesus can save you. Nope. I'll take my chances with this. Not understanding what you're saying. There's a reason why Jesus went through what He went on the cross to save you so you don't have to do that. Amen? And so when we ask God to revive us again, when we take a hold of Him, and family, taking a hold, is that's repentance. And family, watch this. Repentance is not just confessing. Like I've talked to some people this week who are like, yeah, yeah man, I, I know I'm in sin. I was talking to a brother the other day. Was that his place? He goes, man, I, I know I'm broken. I'm in sin. I was like, well, that's great that you know that you're broken. What are you doing, though? Can, can, you, can you lay aside those things? Can you walk away from it? Because that's what repentance is. It's not just confessing. Repentance means I turn my back on that sin, and I now go to the cross, and I'm going to take a hold of Him. Amen? That's repentance, family. And that's what we see right here in verse 2. Look right here in verse 2. It says, you forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath and turned away your hot anger. That's what we need God to do. Amen? We need Him to do it on our life. We need to see Him do it on the church and this nation. It's our only hope. But family, you got to repent. you got to own your sin. you got to own it. And when we own our sins this morning, 
And when we plead and ask God, Lord, forgive me. And family, I'm here to tell you this morning, when you grab a hold of God and pull on His pant leg, He's going to forgive you. He's going to shower you with grace. Family, He's going to be like my dad. When He sees that lifeless body, He's going to dive in and do whatever it has got to do to bring you back. He's a good God. He's merciful. Amen? That's why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross so that we would never face the wrath of God. Jesus took on the wrath for us. That's why He cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that we would never be forsaken. So that when we stood before God on judgment day, Jesus is like, I got him covered. You're good. You don't have to sweat this. I got you covered. I got you covered. Oop, you didn't want me to save you, so mm, you ain't covered. Family, you don't want to hear the words on judgment day not covered. We want to hear covered, amen? Right, Forgiven. Amen. And you have to confess and believe in Christ for that to happen, amen? Family number five on being revived again. Point five. So we need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Family, Acts 2. Jesus tells them, don't go into Samaria yet. Don't go into Judea. Don't go to the ends of the earth. Don't go to Jerusalem until what? Until you have the power of the Holy Spirit. And family, if He told them they need the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? Then when we see that right here in Psalms 85, you know what they're saying? We need the presence of God. That's why they're taking a hold of God. We're going to take a hold of you, God, because we need you to shine on us again. We need your presence. Because family, hear me on this. I love what God has been doing in this church in this last year. How He has just grown this church and, and, and just what He's done has just been incredible. But family, if God's presence is not here, it means nothing. If we build that new building that we're going to build and the presence of God is not in it or in that building, it means nothing. We need the presence of God. We need Him in our life. And we're crazy to think that we can do anything without the presence of God. But that's what one of the guilty things of the American church. We think because there's all these people, God's there. And family, there are many places with many people and God is not there. Numbers don't mean anything. Read your Bible. He shrunk Gideon's army. Gideon, you're a mega church. We're going to shrink this down, buddy. <laughs> what? I'm shrinking this down, bad boy. I want all the glory. And so if I shrink it down, everyone's got to give me praise. He wants the glory. And all that matters, you want 10,000 without God or 300 with God? Man, I'll go with the 300 with God, amen? It's what we want any time of the day. Number six, on God reviving and restoring us again, family. Do you grasp the urgency of the hour? And when it comes to this revive us again, family, that means do you grasp the urgency of the hour? Do you understand the state that we're in right now? Because here's the state of our nation. It depends on who's the president. Who owns Congress. And that's where Americans will tell you whether we're good or not. So if you're Republican, oh, oh, we're dying and going to hell. If you're a Democrat and your person's not in office, well, we're dying and going to hell. And you know what God is saying? You're dying and going to hell with either one in office. They can't save you. It's why your nation is worse off. You keep putting your hope in mankind. You keep putting your hope in Supreme Courts. You keep putting... Hopes in philosophies. Well, I think this philosophy will fix our nation. And the whole time God is going, you're no different from Israel when it rejected me as king. Your problem is I don't sit on the throne. That is the problem of America. God is not on the throne. And people are upset. We don't want Him on the throne. And we're upset that it's going to get worse. And it's only going to get worse. Only with God can there be true justice, true peace, and true reign, family. We've got to put Him back on the throne. Amen? And family, why is this nation drowning? Because the church is drowning. Linda Ravenhill said it well. As the church goes, so goes the nation. The church, we've got to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we being what God has called us to be? Are we reaching all people? Giving people the gospel. 
standing for what is right. And family, hear me in this. When revival takes place, people are getting saved. Can I get an amen? amen. My family, they're getting saved. And, and no one can take any credit or any glory for it. They're, they're just getting saved. It, it, it's like I shared to y'all uh, back in the Waking series when I was at the Christian private school and, and God just showed up in this one service. No one, had, no one preached a sermon. Just young person after young person after young person was convicted by God, crying out, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to forgive my parents? What must I do to let go of these addictions? Without anyone ever preaching. Only God can do something like that. We can't make that happen on our own. Amen? Amen. That's why we need revival. Where God just breathes and He just does what no one else can do. And family, notice it says right here in verse 6, not only revive us, but it says revive us what? Again. What does that mean? That there's been revivals before us. And there has. And what that means is they, they, they understand the presence of God. They've been in His presence. Family, I, I get that too. I've seen it. And we should be like Moses. We should want more. Amen? We shouldn't be satisfied. If you know Moses, he wasn't satisfied. God said, I'm not going to be with the people no more. I'm done with their stubbornness. Moses, please, God, have grace, have mercy. We're no good without your presence. Fine, I'll, I'll be with you. And Moses could have stopped. Many of us would have stopped. Oh, you said you're going to be with us? Okay, that's all I need to hear. Not Moses. Moses like, no way, God. Uh-uh, I want more. I've tasted and seen how good you are. I've experienced your peace, your joy, your happiness. I want more. Show me your glory. Show me your face. And family, the Word of God says if we'll seek the face of God, He'll what? He'll be found. Are we hungry for God's glory to see His face? To see His power move? Or are we just satisfied with the little? Be like my kids. Don't be satisfied with the little. Sweetie, I did this for you. I want more. Stop being like Moses. Man, we want to be like Moses, amen? Give me more, God. And in family, point number seven, as you do this, and I mean really do this prayer, God will speak. Can I get an amen? Look right here at verse eight. It says this. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. Look at someone and say, God will speak. speak. Now, the number one way He speaks is what? Through His Word. Number one way. Family, He speaks audibly at times. He speaks through people. He speaks through nature. But it will always back up the Word of God. But know this. He will speak. If you will cry out to Him, He will speak. We're we're believing that. We have people in this church that need to be healed of cancer. And we're believing we're going to hear the voice of God say, Healed. Amen? Amen. We have marriages that need to be restored. We believe we're going to hear the voice of God restored. Amen? Amen? We have people in this church whose children are, 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 are off squandering everything. And we believe God will speak that child's coming back to the fold. Amen? Amen. We know there's people who are drowning and we're believing by God's grace we're going to hear saved. Amen? Amen? Bought by the price and the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. But family, they're confident they will hear God speak. They are confident they will see revival. Are we confident? Do we believe? Because I know about you, family, I keep telling God, I ain't gonna, I'm ain't going to be like the widow, Lord. I'm going to keep coming to you until I see revival, God. I don't know what i got to do. Where you're finally like, man, let them see revival. Like, man, if a wicked judge would grant the widow what he granted her, what did God say? How much more will God do for us? Amen? And family, what does 2 Chronicles 7.14 say? If my people called by my name will do what? Humble themselves. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll do what? I'll, I'll hear from heaven. And I will hear, heal their land. But notice what he said. I will hear them. Why? Because God hears the prayers of His people when He knows we're genuine. Are you hearing me on this family? And that's why he goes on in verse 8 to say this. Look at verse 8. For He will speak peace. Hallelujah. We, do we, need, we need peace. Amen. Amen. To His people and to His saints. 
And then look how it ends in verse 8. But let them not turn back to folly. So, so point 8 is God will speak, but family, if we're going to turn back to the folly, God ain't going to speak. He's not going to answer. It's going to be like I was just reading in Isaiah last night. In Isaiah 1 and 2, God is like, I'm done with your sin. I'm done watching you sin. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you coming to church. You, you do these prayers. You do these cries. And you run right back to your sin. I'm done. I don't receive your prayer. I don't receive your false sacrifice. Why? Because the, the reason why we're pulling on His pant leg, the reason why we're crying out, save me from drowning, is not so that we can live for Him. So that we can keep living for ourselves. Just, God, can I be in my sin and it don't cost me anything? Can I be in my sin and I don't have to drown? Can I just stay asleep? Let Brother Billy stay awake, Lord, and let me just sleep. So he says, don't turn back to your folly. Family, it reminds me the first time I got arrested. And well, and all the other times I got in trouble with the law. And, and, and I would do this prayer. Oh God, oh Lord, get me out of here. But family, you know what I was crying out for? Just get me out of trouble. God can't. I dabble in what I'm dabbling in and there's no consequences. Because every time He would get me out, guess what I would do? I would go right back. Find myself right back in trouble. That's why I finally heard my dad say the words, Son, stop telling me you know Jesus. You know nothing of Him. You can say you love Him all day long, but you're not head over heels in love. And I'm afraid if you die, I will not see you in eternity. Man, we need parents like that. And that rocked me. Well, what do you mean I'm not going to see eternity? He was right. I wasn't. I didn't know who God was. The only time I cried out to God was when I was drowning. Rescue me so I can go right back to drowning again. Praise God, I finally stopped drowning. Amen? Amen. And family, is what he's saying. Don't go back to your folly. And family, hear me on this. I have times this year where I've seen where I've had to go to God and say, God, forgive me. I see myself falling, what? Back in the folly. There are times where I've wanted to go back to making the Bible checklist and where I'm like, Lord, I've spent a lot of time with you this year. I can check out a little, right? No, you can't. The work ain't done until I call you home. Your rest ain't till I take you to eternity. Then you can sit back and chill. But right now, there's work to be done. We can't go back to our folly. Amen, family? And family, I wrote this on here because I was... One of the things the Lord showed me, um, don't go back to your folly, is and why we need to repent as a whole and, and as a group so that we're all swimming together. Acts Community Church, and we want all the other churches in America, we're all doing what? We're swimming together to the cross. And as we're swimming to the cross, we see people drowning. Here, come on. Come on. Oh, I see you're asleep. Come on, buddy. I know you think you're okay because you're not drowning, but trust me, you're in far more danger than those who are drowning. Because see, the person asleep thinks there's nothing wrong. I'm good. They, they, like we smell the crawfish, they can't smell the flames. They're not good. And what are we doing to say, hey, come on, get up. I thought we were friends. We are friends. That's why I'm saying get up. Because a friend will do everything they can to save their friend from drowning. Amen? A friend will do everything they can to save their friend from going to the pits of hell. Amen? Amen. We'll do everything. If it means you hate us, then hate us. But I love you. And I can't let you go to those flames. I need you here swimming with me. That's our only hope. It's the cross. Amen, family? And family, that's why they're able to say in verse 6 as we close out, Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Family, why is there no rejoicing in our nation? Because we need revival. Without God, we can't love. Everyone keeps demanding that we love each other. How can you love if you don't know God? Because I'll tell anybody, if you know God and you love God, you can't hate others. It's impossible. You don't know God if you hate others. And you're not loving others. There is joy. We're in Philippians. Paul is locked up in chains and he's full of joy. Why? He's experienced revival in jail. Why? 
Because he knows God is breathing on the church and moving. It's incredible. And gel, and he's rejoicing. We too can rejoice, but it comes from revival. It comes from that salvation. Lord, as David said, renew the joy of what? Of my salvation. And that's what we need, family. It's what the church needs. It's what our nation needs. Anybody been around me? I love laughing. I want to have a good time. In the presence of God, there is joy. Amen, family? And that's what we need. Let's bow our heads and let's pray.